Ray, we're going to find out something fun. We just heard a story, and I'm going to ask Becky Rogers to tell it again. Robert Colin is here. He's one of the managers over at Top of the World. You might have heard uh, a, little, a little thing that was going on over there. They were giving a house away to help raise money for hospice. And uh, Rebecca Rogers is the uh, major planned gift officer for hospice of Marion County. And uh, so good morning to both of you. Good, good morning. Good Thanks for having again. us. Is your microphone on? I don't know. Oh, oops, what did I do wrong? Try now. Hello. What? Okay. Try now. Hello. There we there go. We you would think by now I would know how to do this, some of this stuff. So. <laughs> it's a lot going on. Well, good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. So I know you just told us the story. Yes, it but was you, exciting. So we, we had it wrong. We thought you were going to pick the name here. But you picked it at an event last night. We did. We okay. gathered last night at the, cult, um, the Circle Square Cultural Center. And we had about 400 people come, all ticket holders. Nice. Hoping that their name Everybody was going to Yes, yes, yes they yes. were all excited. Um, we had a backyard barbecue to celebrate. So um, at about 6 o'clock, we brought all of those raffle tickets, and they were certified by an independent auditor. Nice. And we brought them on stage, and we did the raffle drum. We picked the winner. And in the rules, you didn't have to be present to win. So we knew that that was a possibility, right? So we called the name. And our music was playing, the lights were low, and Margaret Stewart, S-T-U-H-R, from Summerfield was the winner, and she was not there. So our plan was, that's okay, we're going to call her on the phone. So we dialed the number, it rang like five times. We were a little nervous. And everybody in the audience could hear the phone call? Everybody could hear the phone call. Wow. So... We waited and waited, and I said, she must be screening us. She thinks I'm a telemarketer. So we waited, <laughs> and finally this sweet voice answers the phone. Hello? <laughs> and we hear it over the loudspeaker. Oh, no. <laughs> and I said, Margaret? She said, yes. And I said, my name's Rebecca Rogers with Hospice of Marion County, and you won the grand prize of the homefreeprize.com. And she says, oh! Oh my God! <laughs> and um, then she said, "I can't hear you. I can't hear you." And so it that went on for a few seconds because the connection she just couldn't hear. Uh -huh. So um, her next question then was, "Well, what's it worth?" <laughs> and I actually said live, um, "I said, well, this is worth about a million hits on YouTube right now." <laughs> <laughs> and so the audience, I said, "We're here with 400 of your new best friends to oh celebrate." with Gosh, you and she said I was gonna try to make it but I couldn't and um, so she was real excited and then I told her I'd call her in a few minutes so oh. we all celebrated we dropped wow. the balloons how exciting is that it was how fantastic cool. yeah. and it all benefited Hospice of Marion County and I will I have to say thank you to On Top of the World they are such a huge supporter of Hospice of Marion County we are a community hospice we were um, founded by this community for this community right, and right, On right. Top of the World has probably over 200 of their residents residents who volunteer for hospice regularly. Is that right? Wow. Yes. So wow. it is such a partnership. And it was last night's fundraiser. We generated um, for that fundraiser over two hundred and forty thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah. Hospice yeah. of Marion County. Oh, you're it me is, chills. Look at it those is, chills It is. It is the there. singular most successful wow. fundraising event in the history of Hospice of Marion County. Wow! So it is just we are over the moon about it. It was fantastic. Uh, Robert, that's awesome. Yeah, we're so proud to be able to help hospice. That is yeah, that is yeah. fabulous. And, and you were telling us in one of the previous visits that all all of the people who contributed to the house also gave everything. That's that's right, I, and I made a note here too. There, there were so many contractors, our construction uh, superintendents, but there, everybody donated. And the, the the employees, the the companies, that everyone donated to this, and every single dollar that that was uh, that is going to go into to, went into um, the raffle tickets goes directly to hospice. Nothing went anywhere else. Mm -hmm, nice. Does Margaret Stewart live in the area? She lives in Summerfield. In Summerfield, so yes, not too far away. Not too far away, and she's meeting us this morning at 11 to see her brand new home, and she said she had to come at 11 because she has to bring her sister. So Aww. she is so excited. She asked me the color of the house. Um, she's just, she is thrilled about it. Wow. So actually, uh -huh. we will be doing a little more of a story with her to really find out about her. She was delightful. And I, I bet 
you write about the getting a million hits on YouTube. Too. <laughs> <laughs> it was at, I, we couldn't have scripted it better. She was really so much fun on the phone. So. Oh my gosh, that is such a great. Uh, I mean, it was a, a win-win in every single regard, right? Every single aspect, and, right. um, and it sounds like the people who live near her will have a nice neighbor too. Oh yes, that absolutely. was part. That was the only part of this I wondered about. I wondered <laughs> what if you get a, a grungy, a crump, you know, what do you go, a grumpy old guy or something? That's for sure. And I, I could tell you that some of those neighbors they would call me or talk to me. <laughs> what's going to happen if, if and I said <laughs> you know I think we just got to leave it out there so yeah. she got, and like, so I will tell you Margaret Stewart is wonderful I am team Margaret today because she is she is a fantastic lady I, it, we were so thrilled for her we could just tell over the phone she was genuinely surprised Aww. she was so grateful and is so excited do we know and if you and if we do and you feel uncomfortable telling us this, then we'll just we'll just move on to something else. But do we know her personal story? Is she married? Is she? We don't know. We don't know. I get to yet, meet huh? her today and find out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Nice. She just had the winning ticket. <laughs> and she was really cute because when I called, I said, well, Margaret, you weren't here. And she said, I know. I had it sitting on the counter. I said, well, can you read for me the ticket? I just want to be sure I have the right Margaret Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she said, well, I got an email from this girl, Rebecca Rogers. And I said, right, Margaret. I am that Rebecca Rogers. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, she was just so great. Oh, wow. nice. So great. Nice. That is so nice. She's, yeah. she's going to love it there. Yes. And yeah. we're going to love her. So. I, w I wonder if she has friends. Was she, has she been to On Top of the World? I wonder if she was... She, well, I, w I was giving her the directions, I said, to meet at the house. And she said, well, I know where On Top of the World is. I've, I've been out there. So she corrected okay. me very quickly. Okay. Right. I know exactly where to go. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> so we're going to take her on the On Top of the World um, bus vehicle over to the house this morning. Um, the team is. And we're going to show her the house and oh my take gosh. pictures of her. Any and news media going to be there? You got anybody showing up? Oh, yeah. That's right. They've worked on that. So... Yeah. I'm hoping so. Good. good. I g I'm taking care of Margaret. I know that. So yeah. No, that's the most important that's thing. Right. You take care of Margaret. Everybody right. else has their own job that's right. to do. We want to. We want one of the news people about that. We want to watch the video later on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I am sure it'll be on Facebook. On top of the world. Yeah, we live stream. It, well, that's so. true. We're we're all kind of news media these days. Aren't that's we? right. Yeah. We live stream on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Robert, you have you and your crew have got to feel really good about this too, because you're all such givers, and we're, this we're is ecstatic. phenomenal. And then, you know, obviously, helping hospice is so important for the community. And, and as Rebecca was saying, there's so many volunteers on top of the world, but it's not just the the, the residents. It, it was all the, the contractors. Look, we were talking about have really come together to help, and we're just. I think everyone is just excited to know that this money is going to be, as Rebecca was saying, transformational for hospice, and, and she can tell you more about how that will happen, but we're just so excited about that. You know, we care for, and I've said it before, we care for about 350 people a day in Marion County, and so a gift like this is really transformational to what we're able to provide at that end-of-life care as we walk those people home, and it is, um, we are just over the moon about it. Well, you, you are also beautiful. I, I love all of you. I, the, you got the best attitude, the best smiles. Robin has a lady at her church that works with you. Um, Sharon Cooper. Oh, it's more than one. I don't know Sharon. Yeah. Uh, the lady with the map, with the saxophone. Oh, Amy Rath. Oh, Amy, Amy Rath. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. I mean, that's a, we could do a whole show about Amy Rath and how incredible she is. So it's just, she's I mean, an amazing, she's amazing counselor with our children. So you guys, yes. you guys are outstanding. You know, Robert, do you ever speak at the Master of the Possibilities? Do you ever speak there? Sure. Well, I do a class at First Lone Park there. Because you, you just said something earlier that is one of the like the key things I always hear from successful people is that you have an idea and you just say, well, let's just see what happens just go with it right it's kind of it's kind of like an expression of faith isn't it i would think so you know i, I would say that uh, ken colin my cousin my uncle sydney colin who founded on top of the world sydney was that kind of guy especially he just you know he was always told when he was younger that he's going to amount to nothing and he was a nobody and he was dumb oh. and uh oh, wow you know and, and it's a great lesson it was always a great lesson to me growing up because he was always saying look they told me i stuttered and i was not smart and i was dyslexic and uh but, uh, you know, he almost used that as a driving force for his life, that he was going to prove those people wrong, his high school teachers, his people that didn't like him in schools. And uh, he, he, everything he wanted to do, he accomplished. And, I, you know, going back to Shalom Park was part of that. It was mm -hmm, this great masterpiece mm -hmm. of, of, of landscaping and being oh, a peace sure, park. Oh, sure. I mean, just saying that, I'm, I'm going to start a community. That's right. I mean, that's got to be an act of faith. 
Because yeah. you can't start it without spending a lot of money. Well, I could tell you the whole thing. He wanted to. He traveled all over the world looking for for a place like on top of the world in, here in Ocala, and he traveled to South Africa. He he originally was going to go to Brazil, uh, but uh, he, like he met a woman in Tampa who became his wife in the nineteen or late nineteen forties, and. But he, he was determined. He was always a very determined person to, to accomplish things that and are you, great. Have, you have inherited that. I mean, just some of the things you say kind of give us a little hint about the person th that you are. Oh, and thank you. and uh, <laughs> I, th I think that faith part is really kind of struck me as, as important. When you, first found, when you first had the idea presented to you, or did you come up with the idea to do the house? No, it wasn't me. What, I, I, so when you, when, that, when you first heard about it, were, was was there any like, oh my gosh, I don't know if this is going to work? Well, I, obviously, the, you know, the, for me, the problems start popping in my head. What, what, what do you do with you know the neighbors when they get upset when the? Yeah, that was my first thought. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but uh, you, you know, it, it wasn't my my decision. It was really Ken's and Linda Mozzarella from marketing were the ones who really spearheaded all this. Uh, I just kind of sat back and watched and was able to come on here and talk about it, which was really a great pleasure and because I, I got to serve on the board for hospice for a year. So it was a really a great honor just to see that on top of the world was able to do something this momentous. Nice, thanks. And, and to see right how much money was actually raised. The That's biggest, right, right Beck? Biggest, yeah. most successful fundraising event ever for hospice. Wow. Okay. So it, it just... It's such a great idea. I mean, Guy Woolbright um, from On Top of the World, the CFO, about a year ago, it was December, he and Linda, we sat down and he said, we have an idea. And, and Guy actually serves on one of the boards for Guy hospice, Guy Woolbright too. serves on our philanthropic board. <coughs> so he and I worked together and he said, I've got an idea. What do you think? Mm -hmm. okay. And from that, and that's, but that's the kinds of people on top of the world are from business and from helping. That's they they have ideas and they say let's try this. Do you know the the one thing I think that we don't understand unless we've had somebody who died. Um, I, I don't mean tragically or suddenly, but I mean a prolonged death, which is kind of what you handle those people. We don't understand how important a role you play unless we've gone through that. I've gone through it twice. Robin's gone through it at least twice, right? Yeah. Twice. And and so we see it. We've seen it. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. Uh, but, oh, but, but a lot of times we don't realize how much it actually costs is what I wanted to say. And that's why something like this is so important because we have no clue. We're, we're kind of in the dark. We're scared. Right. You know? Well, and the things that being a community hospice, we want to care for everybody. We believe that everybody deserves a peaceful ending. It doesn't matter your ability to pay, where you come from, your status. We don't care. We care that you are a fellow human. You're in our community. And we want you to have that transition um, that's peaceful and caring. And that's what our mission is. That's what we do. Exceptional and compassionate. If it's not one of those, we don't do it. And this fundraiser proved to be an exceptional and compassionate thing that we do did for our community. So that's what Hospice of Marion County. And by the way, for. Robin is one of your biggest customers at the hospice stores. Yes, the hospice. <laughs> our thrift stores are fantastic. Love them. Yes, you know they they're, their thrift stores are kind of picky too. So we we've had houses where we've uh, you've. Know, we've taken over we purchased and they've come with full stuff and uh, we'll bring hospice out there and they'll take the nice stuff exactly <laughs> oh, well, really? what, about, what about this yeah. junky stuff no thank you we want the <laughs> they do they're, they're all it's all top quality it stuff. is absolutely and I it goes back to really our CEO Mary Ellen Poe who really has established that culture at hospice that we do things exceptionally yes she was we in care here for what, people two weeks yeah. Ago? yeah yeah yeah, so, so. yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a great organization we need a cardboard cut out of you too by the way <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't think my children, I would be, um, they oh, would make fun so of me forever fun. if oh we had God. that. We should all have a cardboard cutout of ourselves. Robin, Robin sees the cardboard cutout all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's Mary Ellen. Oh, She's yes, it's Mary Ellen. Her cardboard all the, cutout yes. is in all the stores. She is in all the stores. <laughs> well, this is really something, Robert, because when Guy went to hospice, he had to come to you first. Oh, oh, oh. No, he did not. No, he goes to Ken. That, and that's what, Ken is really the focal point. And kind of one of the things that makes On Top of the World exceptional is oh. you don't have a big corporate board you don't have uh, shareholders to respond to if, if somebody's got a really good idea they they go to Ken mm -hmm. and it Ken uh, uh, believes in it he, you, he says go for it and then then it's all that person that managers uh, drive that, that pushes it through so you know I'm, I'm sure that was Linda and guy probably came up with this directly and and you know he said go for it and and they they put together something that was really amazing so and then of course all the marketing staff and then all the contractors that mm -hmm. came in behind them 
Yeah, because you had to figure out the uh, uh, logistics. You had to get the permits. You had to do everything right. to build a house. It's not easy. Right. Although they are building hundreds of houses and on top mm-hmm. of the world every year, so that's part of what we do. Yeah, yeah. So I have a question for you that's probably a little bit of a curveball. When, when Robin and I judge the Student Media Festival, yes. after it's done, they, well, actually, no, I'm, let me go back. When we judge the students, the, the kids, they make videos. The, the end of the sheet always says, what could the student have done better? Even if it's a perfect video, we have to have something in that spot. And so, and then at the end of the whole thing, they ask us, as judges, what could the contest have done better? What did you learn from this that you think if you do it again, you would do differently? Was there anything? I mean, it sounds like it went off perfectly, but was there anything along the way that you would do differently? I can tell you that I wouldn't say we could do anything differently. It's because when you're talking about a missional organization like Hospice of Marion County, we would do for one person, even if we couldn't do it for everybody. So when you're talking about a gift well, that, of that, that size... I should have expected that answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can tell you that what we wish we could do better, I will tell you at hospice, is that we wish we could care for more people every day. I can honestly tell you. If we could keep caring for people at the end of their life more and more, everybody at hospice feels that way. Um, we because we really believe i told mariana when she was here if i'm in hospice i'm going to be pranking you every time i can (laughs) right i'm I'm going to be seeing my mom even if i'm not i'm going to tell you oh my mom's here sure (laughs) absolutely larry i i'd like to just answer that it's we gave everything we could to to do this we really put in a tremendous amount of effort to to making sure that the word got out and uh and i think that raising two hundred forty thousand dollars is really an accomplishment absolutely um you know, but I think everyone would have liked to have even done exceeded that amazing number, right? So, you know, the the question is, we had a very limited budget because everything, you know, we we were on the radio show, we were in in print advertisements, we were on rate, we had radio commercials on, all over the place, and uh, but you know, how do you reach out to more and more people so that they get involved with hospice and they can reach out to hospice and say we we believe in your cause and let's help you out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we I think how do we reach that next step of reaching out to people so hmm. that they know that they can help out hospice as well. Maybe a plane pulling a banner. I don't, I don't know how, how you would do it. It's it's just one of those things. Yeah, I'm sure we'll come up with something. It's a it's a hard topic because you're basically talking about your loved ones dying. Right. So, so and how do you put you you don't put a price tag on that um, when you're talking about caring for people at the end of their life. It is. It is a delicate work that we do, yeah. but it's such a necessary and important work. And we at hospice, we normalize death and that in terms of really wanting people to know that you're not alone at the end I of your life. I wonder if that's a new phenomenon. Like, I wonder if in the pioneer days was death just a part of life. Yes. Like they sure. got it. Actually, yes. Yeah. Because if you look at history, families cared for loved ones, and there's other cultures that still do, up until the very end. It's not seen as something to avoid. It's actually something you embrace. Well, mm-hmm. you, can I say something, too? Because I know this from my own family. That For those listening who've, who've thought, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? I, I will never send my mom to a hospice house. Not because they don't like you, but because yeah. I can do it myself. Yep. The truth is my dad died at home but with your help yes so we were doing as much as we could but you guys came in you ladies right and helped him keep his dignity by being where he wanted to be yes absolutely you know there's a story that's often told about fred rogers who he did mr rogers neighborhood he was the um no relation or no relation (laughs) no relation unfortunately I i wish i could say that um but he tells the story of He credits the success that he had as a person to his mom because when he was younger he dealt with a lot of anxiety and she used he would watch television and he would see something really scary on the news something that was happening he credits his mom for telling him you're I want you to continue to watch the scary thing but what I want you to do is when you're watching it I want you to look for the helpers and you'll see the people on the screen in disasters or in tragedy and we see that much today you will see people consoling hugging protecting covering people oh wonderful and he yeah, said yeah. she said if you always look for the helpers you'll know that it's okay 
he credits that wow. really that as amazing. looking for helpers. And that's what he wanted to be. That's why his program that he started, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, mm -hmm. was to help children who were really struggling in their life to not make them afraid. It gives you a real different context if you ever watch his show it now. Does. It because does. Because he really wanted children to feel great about themselves. You're loved. You're treasured. You're wonderful. Um, you can do great things. So I often say, if you want to look for the helpers in a community, look at your not-for-profit organizations and the people that work for mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. And you will see helpers doing the things in their community to make it a better place. Hospice of Marion County is one of those organizations. Um, you think we have the how many people volunteer for hospice, not yes. just from on top of but everywhere? Yes. And it, what it really says about Marion County, it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it, does. Yeah. it does. Look for Everybody the helpers. So up. even in something as tragic as the end of life, you can find a helper sitting by your bedside, um, giving you cups of water, sips of water, putting a blanket, caring for a loved one, warm socks. Those little intangibles as we walk people home, it, it's you can't put a price tag on that. Isn't so that an amazing uh, statement, walking people home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, yeah. Is, boy, yeah. that should be in a plaque somewhere. Well, I believe that actually originated from Rumi, the writer. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it is a beautiful way to say that's what we're here for. I love that. Gosh. Rob and I do music sometimes at nursing homes. And when we're done, we always thank them all. One by one, we'll shake their hands yes. as we walk out. Yeah. And, and, and one old guy one time said, oh, here's those people that shake our hands. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't say, here's those people that play music. He said, here's yeah. those people that shake our hands. Well, one guy said, here's the guy that drives the Buick. Yeah. And I said, yeah, I'm the, I'm the guy that drives the Buick. I don't know what that did for them. But, but see, it's the little things, the little things that yeah. we know yeah. in yeah. our interconnectedness with one another that it makes a difference. It's a smile. It's shake our hands I think, in a song. I think it says a lot about the for-profit part of the community, too. Absolutely. Be because obviously we have to work together yes. so we can have some money, you know. To Robert and I were talking about before we we're on the air that it is such a great balance you have you can't have one without the other yeah you really can't mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it's another one of those uh, principles of success is this the person who knows that his or her success is is not alone that you have to thank people and even if it's people you don't know through the agencies for example that like hospice so wow. yeah, you should do a show on principles of success we have <laughs> <laughs> was that a book review? <laughs> oh, you know, a long time ago, right? This yeah. Seven Principles or yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah. But I, mean, I always think about it. It's one Stephen of those, Covey, maybe. The, I think so. I think so, yeah. yeah. And it's not the, uh, the the adults exclusively. I mean, the children are there. The the teenagers with their clubs in the high school, oh, they're absolutely. out there raising money and awareness. And then you've it uh, trickles down to the elementary school age children. Do you yes. still do the butterfly uh, release with kids? We don't. We okay. have we we don't do that event. We're always looking for other ways, but we do have the Monarch Center for Hope and Healing, which is our bereavement community oh, center yes. that Amy Rath is a part of. Yeah. And just this past weekend, we did Camp Mariposa, which we do a couple times a year, and that is a camp for children who have lost someone in their life, mm -hmm. and we actually bring them in, and our counselors and volunteers spend an entire day with them, helping them process that loss at such a young age. They have a different perspective, and maybe not the, they don't have the life experience to really understand loss. Mm -hmm. And so I know this past weekend, we had 31 children from our community join, come to Hospice of Marion County for the day, and really walk through and sort of face those issues and talk about those issues. And that's another thing. See, hospice doesn't end with you when your loved one passes. We actually walk through that grieving process mm -hmm. with you. And oh, I got a few calls after yeah. each, each of my parents died. I had a call or two after afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we have so many people in the community who help us with that, um, with that camp and really helping our children. So hospice is far-reaching and the support from the community is far-reaching as well. Will you be having a, uh, a, a uh, booth at Light Up Ocala for hospice? Not that I know of, but Where? you may have just given us a great idea, so <laughs> I'm going to get on that oh my today. Gosh. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, sometimes people when people up. are in a, a friendly feeling situation, sure. they'll gravitate there. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think the, I think the one thing I can remember uh, before I had any involvement with hospice was I didn't want to hear the word. I didn't want somebody to say to me, "I think it's time for your father to be in hospice mm -hmm. care," because that meant, "Okay, you're telling me he's going to die." I didn't want to hear that. Now looking back at it, I, I recognize, like you said before, that it is part of life. 
Unfortunately, it is, but it is. And, and we don't want people to equate the word hospice with death. Hospice actually is a respite word. It means it really is to help the caregiver and the family. So we don't want people equating that word hospice with death. We want them equating to, uh, hospice with help and helping people to feel better and live better yeah. up until a such time as naturally they're going to pass. Yeah, yeah. So hospice really are the helpers. We're a respite care for you, for yourself and for your family and your caregivers. Mm. And Robert, you're one of the helpers. Yeah, you and on you. top of the world and mm. everybody in your community. Yeah, there's so many people, and I'm just here representing the, all those people who have mm -hmm. done so much. So, Do you know what I, I've said this before, and so I hope I'm not being redundant too much, but whenever we go for anything, the first, like, apply for a job, that they'll always say, do you have any experience? I always thought, if I, if I get to heaven, you know, if I get to that gate, and I'm not in there yet, and there's a guy named Peter. That's what I hear. There's a guy named Peter, right? And he says to me, do you have any experience? <laughs> I'm going to say, no. But Becky has some. <laughs> That's right. I'm friends with Becky. <laughs> I'm friends with somebody. I, I don't know if you want to say you're friends with Rebecca Rogers and try to get into heaven. I She's, don't know. You might say you're a queen. Do you have any experience being <laughs> heaven-like or angel-like? No, I don't. But I know Robin. Can yeah. you text that to my three children and tell them what you're saying? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you, Robert. Well, I mean, you just, you so just gave your here. whole show to this wonderful cause and, and, of course, the whole house to this wonderful cause. Thank you for what you've done. You're, you're Thank amazing. You. Thank you. And as I said, I just represent all those other people that that are not here. So sign of a humble man, right there. Very humble. I can I can never give him a compliment. I know. He always wonderful. tosses it to somebody else. That's how all of them are. There, they are. They're always tossing, yeah. it. and it's Good. all of them are exceptional. Two beautiful people. Yes. Telling the truth. <laughs> so, uh, Robert Colin, thank you for what you do and for coming in here to share it with us. Rebecca Rogers, you're amazing. Thank, thank you for what you. you do. Thank you. We are going to take a break. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.